love their restaurant live up to their incredible story. Today we will visit Cocina Hermanos Torres. Good evening, YouTube. We're What's back. Good, YouTube. We're back with another one. Studio B21 back again, reacting to another fine dining culinary video. Back, Once up, it, back into our roots. Back into the roots. Yeah. Like. I don't know about how our Noma video did. It's still doing pretty good from what I hear. Still getting some views. It's yeah. still getting some views here and there. But this speaks to us. We're both ex-culinary. And it's just good seeing where the world of high dining is. Something that we might never be able to experience. Unless we're, you know, unless we Unless we hit that Waddle 649. I, I, I've done a lot of fine dining. I'm ate a couple fine dining places but my majority of my experience is behind the line yeah serving the good food actually tasting the good food yeah but not having that whole not having to sit down the with the good wine yeah and enjoy the company it's like so it's fun to it's fun know, experience it, it's fun to see, it's fun to see from the customer's eyes how yes, the food looks as yes, it comes that's out it's exactly so we are back with another alexander the guest video when we uploaded today, as we were in our recording session, so we figured, you know what? We deserve a treat. We're going to go into this one completely blind, and we're going to see what the famous Twins restaurant in Barcelona has to offer. And welcome back, guys. Let's get into the video, shall we? Do you know the famous Twins? Not them, them. Javier and Sergio, three brothers, both chefs. After college, they go their separate way to learn as much as they could, believing their combined knowledge would be amplified. One stays in Spain and the other to the UK. Eventually, they would reunite in Barcelona, join. So, Spanish and UK food. What do you think? Do they mix? There's similarities and there's differences. It's more of your approach to food that's different. Yes. Rather than the actual location. Because in the modern way, world, you could get any ingredient. And you make want. it. Yep. Right? The thing about, maybe it's just an old-fashioned viewing of mine. When I think of British versus Spanish food, I think of tapas on the Spanish food. Little bites okay. that you get for free as you're drinking. Versus, and call it old-fashioned, but... The Sunday roast on the UK side. Well, yeah, I was thinking the heavy like, Yorkshire puddings, like the fish and chips. <laughs> the, the fish and chip shop, yes. Fuck yeah. He fried everything, you know, with the curry sauce. Yeah. You know, the Worcestershire shire. Oh, Worcestershire. But yeah. my thing is, like, fine dining in the UK is all French food. You know what I'm saying? French food, French chefs cook the best UK food. Yeah. Of course, and take the Spanish culinary landscape by storm. In 2018, they opened the restaurant, and by 2022, they have all three Michelin stars. Nice story is. I would like to point out that it, technically that's only two years because in 2020, the world shut down. It took them essentially, unless they were doing like carry out three Michelin style, it took them two years to get three Michelin stars essentially. Yeah, to get. All that backing to stay open. Exactly. Wow. That's okay. some talent behind there. Okay. Isn't it? But does their restaurant live up to their incredible story? Today we will visit Cocina Hermanos Torres. We are in Barcelona, in the laid back neighborhood of Les Cortes. In this area, we can find the home of FC Barcelona, where the greats like Ronaldinho, Neymar, and Lionel Messi all play. This neighborhood is also home to our restaurant for today. From the outside, you would never guess that this is a 3 Michelin star restaurant. It actually used to be a warehouse and a former tire center. What kind of tires did they sell? I shouldn't have to tell you. You guessed it. Michelin. The Michelin Guide was first written in 1900 to give car owners a reason to travel off the beaten path. Together with other tire makers, brothers Edward and Andre Michelin published a guide for French motorists. Nearly 35,000 copies of this first free edition of the guide were distributed. It included maps, tire repair and replacement instructions, listing for car mechanics, hotels and petrol stations, and restaurants throughout France. It has since grown to be what many call the Bible of fine dining. 
with a series of guides covering 45 countries. After selling tires and getting three stars, this place seems blessed by all things Michelin. Inside the kitchen. So, Michelin. Awesome breakdown. Great breakdown. Amazing breakdown yeah. of him. Of that, of the Bible. The Bible. Of Bible. Culinary. Because, you know, like, why is three stars important? Why do people keep talking about Michelin stars? That's pretty much it there. You know? Because it we, serves as a standard. A of, very high standard, but yes. You know, it's like, how do you know what place is good? How do you know? Would you would bad? you like to hear a conspiracy theory of mine, I know? Let's do it. I don't believe it, but I want to say that this person, Alexander, mm -hmm. is a secret Michelin ins inspector. Because he he I know it's conflict of interest because he had he part owns a one Michelin star restaurant in Nor in Hungary. Mm -hmm. However, he keeps going to all these three Michelin star restaurants multiple times. Multiple times. Multiple times. He's said in his Instagram, it's like, oh, it's another visit here. Like, I've been here before. And it's just how the money needed for that is insane. Like, you yeah. have to be either a millionaire or being backed by Michelin, I think. Or it's like, that's what chefs do with their money, though. That's true. But that's a lot of money to spend. You know, like Louis's been over to a couple Michelin stars. Yeah. The last couple of years. That's true. You know, just you save up your money, eat somewhere good, figure out what you want to do. Reflect you know, upon it. You know? Yeah. What makes it good? You know? Then it's like, okay, and this then, is good because of this. And I'll and try what, that technique. And then what makes it great means it makes it Michelin. Three stars. Dominates the huge 800 square meter space. It feels like the movie set of a culinary colosseum. Very open concept. In the center is where all the action happens. Home of the culinary warriors, armed with the razor sharp knives, and their only armor is an apron. Around it, the lucky spectators can enjoy the show. At the table, we find a beautiful contrast in the design. With comfortable chairs, elegant table settings, and white tablecloths, really that warm up the atmosphere. We see more duality in the servers. Their former blue suits are paired with... I would like to talk about the placement of the kitchen. Okay. It's not behind the wall. There is no fuck-ups in that kitchen. You have everyone watching you at all times. You have to be perfect there. How's that different between a buffet? You're serving food, you're making food. You know, service style thing. But yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. It's a, it looks beautiful. Yeah, but you, don't get the, you don't get the kitchen top. That's true. That you're missing out on that. Yeah. At high top sneakers. Hopefully, it's a metaphor for the experience with classical service and the touch of playfulness. I love the concept. The shoes were made by Barcelona sportswear company Munich who created the exclusive shoes to celebrate the heaven of Torres' third Michelin star. The color is picked up in the flowers and the menu. I like the concept. I start noticing things in twos. On the base plate, the menu, and with the flowers. Cocina Hermanos Torres means Torres Brothers Kitchen in Spanish. And no surprise, there are two of them, and they are twins. Our server shows the wine pairings. There are two options. One for 190 and the other is 350 euro. We also check out the wine list. It's extensive with some heavy hitters, including a 1986 group low de menu for 6,500 euro. It's tempting. Good choice. All right, chat. I've run the calculations. That's 6,500 euro bottle of crude champagne is drum roll please nine thousand six hundred and twelve dollars for one bottle of champagne in fairness that's canadian yeah 
nine thousand, mm-hmm. almost ten grand Canadian for one bottle. It's Canadian. Canadian. But good lord, guys. <laughs> It never ceases to amaze me. But it is 1996, so I do appreciate that. I would have been only four at that time. I... You're not... I, don't date yourself. I'm, I'm old. You are old. But I choose a second tier wine pairing instead. Our welcome drink is prepared fresh at the table. It's a refreshing blend of celery juice and cherry wine that has a kick to it. Not far behind is our Amis bush. I love the little serving table and the bite has gorgeous textures. Pepper and smoked anchovy bonbon, crispy steak tartar, and a sandwich with tomato and Bavarian ham. Our first wine is a Chardonnay from Argentina. It's a 2022 Zuccardi Botanical. Our first course makes me feel a sense of harmony just looking at it. It's a fine dining version of Surf and Turf. Warm squid tatar with imperial beluga caviar in a cold chicken broth. Each ingredient has its own... Squid tartar. Squid tartar. I just want to comment on the perfection of the canal of the caviar. There is not one bead out of place. <coughs> I like the Russian service. Yeah. I... Like if we could go back just one little one little bit, I would absolutely kill to have these kind of like table stands <coughs> for little appetizers where I work. I remember making them moose bushes. It was like I thought the concept was so cool. Where yeah, it's like just a little one biters. Just one biter to amuse them out. Yeah, to warm you up. You know, it's just like it's not even on the menu. It's just like. It's like whatever we I had. I want to do something cool. Whatever we had in the fridge yeah. that we're going to get rid of, but it's we're going to make it look, we're going to make it taste great. That's the thing with me. It was like, okay, I have this, this, and this. Uh, Nigel, what are you going to do? Make something cool. We, that's our mood boost yep. for the prefix. And like a lot of pressure. And I made it. Oh, it's like amazing experience. And we need a hundred of them. <laughs> My chicken broth is the most surprising because creating something so special from such a simple ingredient is very difficult. I like this elegant and modern vertical plating, which allowed me to taste all the flavors in one spoonful. Homemade bread from white wheat and rye and olive oil from Catalonia. This is traditional Catalonian rustic bread with thick crust and a dense spongy crumb. The sommelier called Azahara is full of energy. It's refreshing to see servers without pretense, just being their authentic selves. She's friendly and charming, and seems to be having just as much fun as we are. This is my kind of service. For our next wine, she takes us to the northwest of Spain. It's a- For me, when I was front of the house, that was my serving style. Yeah. You know, I'm the very personal, let's have fun Jovial. together. Let's joke about the wines, you, you know? No, let's, let's just have fun. This yeah. is like a fun experience. Let's have it together. There's Tacticorum, your fine dining experience, then maybe you have to read the table as you come. Right? You have to be a good judge of character, yes. If you come in, they're like having a business meeting, blah, blah, blah. Or like, you know, it was Serve one, the of, wine, one shut of the up. breakup tables. Serve the wine, shut up, shut go. Shut up, you go, you know, but I like this style where it's like, you know what? I'm going to have fun. Let's have fun together. Yeah. You know. The 2022 Godello from producer Rafael Palacios. This one is young and really crisp. Our second course is Galician crab, a seaweed cracker, and a broth made with the essence of king prawn and herbs. The whole thing is beautiful like a modern painting. Nice textures with a complex Amazing. mix of flavors. Sweet and briny, umami and herbal. Not as concentrated as I hoped, but still very good. A new sommelier arrives. She's Maria from Russia. Our relationship... I counted about 14, 16 movements on that one plate. Yep. Started off reserved, but it quickly opened up like a fine wine. Soon we have her laughing and joking around as well. She pours our third wine. It's a Sauvignon from the Jura region of France. 
It's smoky and buttery. We see a more beautiful presentation in our third course. It's white asparagus from Navarra with mustard, saffron and tarragon. Asparagus is in season and it is perfect. And the saffron gives us a touch of exotic flavor. It's an outstanding dish and I really enjoy the geometry. I like the visual presentation of the dishes. It's a seasonal dish oh, and a lot of thought and work went into this. The base is strong and overall this meal has been fantastic so far. Azahara is back and admits she just found out from an other table that I had a fine dining YouTube channel. It doesn't change her behavior one bit, because you can't upgrade the maximum. Look at her behavior before and after she found out. No change at all. That's what a true professional is like. They always give their best. That's what perfectionism is. She gives us a smile and tells us it should get us. See, that's why I loved about my culinary adventure. Yep. Being around those like-minded people who want to do their best, who want to give, who want to make everything and that, perfect. And perfect. being in a three Michelin star place, that has to be your number one priority that's the thing just man. to give a hundred and ten percent every day and you just to make it good to make it perfect and know it's it's fleeting yeah that as soon as you make it perfect it's eaten and it's gone yeah then you're on to the next one it, it so beautiful 10 million subscribers i love it speaking of subscribing if you haven't done so yet go for it hit that button if you haven't already, and we'll do our best to give you more smiles like this one. Next to the table is one of Spain's most famous ingredients, Maresma green peas. They are a highly prized variety of green peas from the Maresma region in Catalonia. It's also known as the green pearl. They have a short growing season from March to May, so we are in luck. They share the plate with tapioca pearls, fried bread and Iberian ham sauce. Here, the rich salty ham sauce enhances the fresh, sweet flavor of the peas. The tapioca pro. Now, out of all the dishes we've seen, this one, to me, this screams like at home, mom, fine dining. Like this, not like it's three Michelin star, don't get me wrong, but if my mom, if you have like a Spanish mom in my eyes, that's what she would be cooking like for some another kind of like tapa or something at home like just the fried bread the peas the tapioca it all goes so well together mm. and like it's presented beautifully this could even just be like mixed in together well that's the thing it's like it's it's hard to make that <laughs> it's hard look, to make look, a pea sexy look good right because yeah look look at it. it's so simple yeah it has to be simple, and that's why you're showing them. And, and that's, that's the hardest thing to make so good, because you can't hide behind it. You can't hide simple. Along the flavors. I love the simplicity here. Bread, ham, and peas. We told the server that we really enjoyed this dish, and they asked if we would like another one. It reminds me of 2010, when I took my mother to Verona to see Turandot. And the tenor sang Nessun Dormo twice. Our next wine is from the Campania wine region in southern Italy. It's a 2021 Fiatura from producer Marisa Cuomo. It's their top five with an average critic score of 95 out of 100. It has a gentle creaminess but with a lively acidity. We're halfway through the savory dishes. Next is roasted and grilled eel with pickled kohlrabi and citrus essence. I wasn't crazy about the presentation or the taste of this one. Sicily from a AAA Just producer, that Ariana Ophelia. Yeah, didn't like it. Yeah, didn't like it. high rated 2021 Frappato. It's paired with traditional cod skew, spicy chorizo gnocchi and cured lemon. I expected chunks of cod, but I was surprised to see them use codfish tripe. Using huh. tripe in a three Michelin star restaurant, Ballsy. I really enjoy this interesting choice. Ballsy. It's a jelly-like ingredient with a distinctive texture. It came with a fine emulsion and the chip on the top was excellent. The next wine is a 2017 Valbuena from producer Vega Cecilia, widely regarded as the greatest wine producer in Spain. This one is a Tempranillo. The taste of food suits it well. It was chosen specially for our first main course. 
suckling pig with tamarind and plum. This dish was not on our menu, but they wanted us to try it. At this moment, I didn't know how grateful I would soon be. This is... Here, I want to make a comment here. Yeah? That's very Filipino. That is a very <laughs> Filipino dish. <laughs> it's like suckling pig, litron, tamarind, fucking plum. It's like that's Filipino, man. It's like, there, there's a Fili there's a Filipino intern in the back, just like God. I hope they like it. <laughs> it's like, but that so people since we've done the Noma video, his subscribers have been skyrocketing, and he is now getting formally recognized without before he even goes to restaurants. So imagine they see a famous YouTuber run with a reputable rep a reputable palate come into his restaurant they're like you know what we're gonna let him try something that we're working on yeah why not? but the thing is he's shown that he has a very discerning and good palate so he can actually make that call of whether it's good or not yeah i like how he's honest like i yeah, completely yeah, i didn't like this one i, I respect like, it that that makes all his other opinions to me it's like more valid exactly you know it's like not everything's good you know but that's very funny. It's one of the most delicious pork dishes of my life. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. The crispy skin, the gorgeous texture of the pork, and the rich flavor of the jus. Amazing. In the fine dining world, pork is not often used for main courses. You often see pigeon or lamb dishes, but rarely pork. Another Catalonian wine is next. It's a 2004 Gratayops. This one comes from Priorat, a small wine region that shot to fame in the past few decades thanks to its intense, full-bodied red wines. It's paired with our final savory course, cured lamb with zucchini and a sauce of mint and black garlic emotions. The lamb is cured for one. Just want to say, exact same plating style as the pork. Meat in the sauce, couple, si couple dots on the side, a nice little side thing on the side, very Michelin star, very Almost textbook, I would say. Okay. See, the thing is with plating style. Yeah. Is that it shows you how the chef wants you to eat. Yes. Right? If you're putting the meat on the sauce, you want you to eat it with the sauce. If it has dots on the side there, it's like, try this first. And then, then try combine. this after. Yep. Right? Because it will give you a different mouthfeel. It'll give you something else. Right? Then try this. If it's all layered on top of each other, and then, it's the, and then the palate sauce. cleanser is the little is a little crisp with asparagus. That's the thing. It's just like there's a lot more communication on the plate. Yeah, a hundred percent. A month, and it's absolutely perfect. The last pork dish set the bar so high that unfortunately the lamb fell short. Uh -huh. Even if it was also a wonderful dish, savory course is done. Now it's time for. But there's a reason why there's a progression. Yeah. Right? It's like all the first appetizers were all fish. Yeah. Right? Then you have to go pork. Then the lamb because it's if, more gamey. If will anything, overpower everything else. I would have well, I would have think the pork would be heavier than the lamb, to be honest with you. Really? With the with the whole gamey uh, lamb is lamb? lamb is extremely young. It might not have had the chance to gather no, the you, gamey. You still get that feel. In there. How many lamb chops, man? It's like you still get that that gamey, lamby taste, right? Pork is more of a neutral flavor, mm. right? And Just, it could have been the it could have been the jus for the pork. True, which is still lingering because in the mouth. Because jus is like essentially concentrate. Yeah. Yeah. By its very nature, but yeah, but Filipino food. Oh yeah. For dessert, the patisserie has its own space in the restaurant which looks out onto the main room and covers 100% of the sweet, bread, chocolate, and dessert service. Our first is a foam made with yogurt, green tea matcha, and citrus, with a shisho leaf on top. Very fresh, clean, and delicious. Azara pours us a sweet wine from Spain. You can do that? How do you make it crispy like that? Fried. Fried to make it deep, deep fried at the last minute. Like but, basil leaf. But how do you make it so flat though? You you do the thing where you put it in between two uh, perforateds and you fry it. Like, you know, the two perforated uh, almost lifters? Mm -hmm. And you just stick it in the deep fryer for a second. 
and it stays flat. Uh, I think it'd be you lay it flat, you candy it, you crush, put in the wipe off the excess, and then you put it between two parchment papers, mm -hmm. and leave it to dry, then you peel that off. Dehydrate it. it. Yep. Okay. Yo V, comment how you would do it. Mm. A 2014 Castel Dancus Mayan made with Semillon grapes. It's fresh, complex, and beautiful to continue with. Next, we meet one half of the dynamic duo, Javier Torres. He and his twin brother Sergio were inspired by their grandmother Catalina, who was a chef at the homes of Barcelona's wealthy. They joined forces in 2002 and invented a piece of cooking technology in partnership with the Polytechnic University of Valencia. It's called the Gastrovac. Sergio worked with Alan Ducas in Paris before joining his brother to open the Dos Cielos restaurant at the Melia Barcelona Sky Hotel. Here, they made a name for themselves as a duo and earned a Michelin star. The twins went on to release several books, their own TV show, cook for a cruise line, and create a menu for an airline. To this day, they are one of only four restaurants in Barcelona with three stars, and the only one to receive the Michelin Gris star for operating a zero-waste kitchen, something both chefs are passionate about. Mm -hmm. Our next dessert is strawberries, white with... My experience, the chefs I've worked with, they're very passionate about food. Yes. And that being said, very passionate about how the food gets to you. You know, it's like I was around when the farm to table craze first started. Yep. I was actually at a farm, you know, doing the farm to table where people come up to the farm and we do the fine dining there. And the fact that there's a lot more thought to a dish than just the actual food. Yes. And it's like, because we realize the impact we have as restaurateurs, as cooks, as a fine dining three Michelin star. And if you could use that impact to have a positive uh, spread throughout the world, that's, that's what we'd like to do. Yeah. Because that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Any comments? I'm very happy about the zero waste. Waste is, in kitchens I've worked, it's something you, it's something you don't think about until you're too deep in it to realize you're doing it a lot. It, it breaks my heart to see how much we waste sometimes. When me and Nino worked at a place together, and we would have to get rid of stuff at the end of the night, and it 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 hurt every night. Yeah, yeah. It was it was way too much to even talk about. Yeah. But yeah. But zero waste and locally sourced and thinking of a carbon footprint, every little bit helps. Every little bit. You know. And use your dollars to do that, you know? All right, back to the video. Vinegar and other flower. It's strawberry season here and these are as fresh as they come. The outdoor flowers are wild and are picked by staff around Barcelona. This is a simple dish designed to bring back childhood memories. A quick tour of the wine cellar and then it's time for our last wine. At 21.5% it's more of a liquor but it's balanced by high levels of sugar. It's a dessert by itself. Just the camera angle on that, the color on that wine, that did not look like a wine. It looked like caramel. Caramel brand. <laughs> Holy shit. Mm. Our next dessert is called the Cocoa Age. It's made with the pulp of the cocoa and inside is white chocolate ice cream. Next, we go behind the scenes with a tour. The brothers also have a YouTube channel with a dedicated place to film. Finally, we are shown to a secret place next door. It's a place to enjoy a fine cigar and relax with a drink. It's back to the main building with our last dessert. Orange blossom made with the peel of the orange. The pretty force bid us farewell. Here we have yuzu marshmallow, lemon and poppy mini cake, dark chocolate drage, passion fruit profiterole and black sesame ice pearl. And that concludes a wonderful meal at Casina Hermanos Torres. Our total for today is 940 euros for two. What can I say? 
940 euros for two people. That is actually incredibly affordable for a th with wine pairing, with the wine pairing they had. That's so incredibly I'm, affordable. I'm guessing they got the cheaper wine pairing. No, they got the second wine pairing. They got the 640. They got the no, it was like 190 euro, I think. There was one. There's a 140 pairing, and there was a 640. I pairing. think so. We got the 140 then. Yeah, cause like yeah. So then that's 280 plus nine, essentially 300 then plus taxes, whatever taxes there are in Barcelona. Even like that is a couple paychecks for us here. However, that is easily attainable to save up and go to if you are a local. That I'm very happy about the price point because that's another thing about three Michelin star places is there's always going to be a huge bill at the end. That was actually a lot better than I thought it would be. Yeah, that makes it unattainable for the majority of people. I legitimately yeah. thought that bill would be like two, two, grand, two, two grand in euros. Yeah. 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 Closer to 5,000 Canadian. Yeah. It's Canadian, though. Not a Canadian, though. Yeah. About Casina Hermanos Torres. This is one restaurant experience with a happy ending. It was a huge surprise from the moment I walked in the door. The layout and atmosphere are unique. The kitchen is beautiful. You don't see something like this every day. The staff are industry experts who deliver the masterclass on truly great service. And last but not least, the menu was brilliant. The Torres twins are a dynamic duo who creatively tackle traditional Spanish cuisine and shape it in their own character, proving that two heads actually are better than one. I already have my next reservation, and I cannot wait. So what'd you think, Nano? It looked beautiful. I was more impressed with the zero emission thing. It's like, okay, you did all that, and you have like zero waste. That's, Practically zero waste, yeah. That's so cool. You know, their, their food, I liked the presentation throughout. Yes. I thought the dessert presentation was a little afterthought ish. Yeah. It's like, oh, by the way, let's put this out. It's like, what do you got? Yeah, yeah. Put I it on do. That plate, I, you know. Speaking of plates, I, w I, don't, I don't think I said it during, but I did love all almost all the plates they were using. Like, they were all crisp, clean. Like, they suited the food that was on it perfectly. Mm hmm. The food wise, no complaints. No like, complaints. I like the progression. I like the ramp up. You know, like if I had the llamas, the La Pile made course, I don't know about that. But uh, um, I hope they put the pork on the menu. Well, that's all tasting, right? It has to be that was tasting. something that they were working on. It wasn't on the menu. Oh, wasn't it? It wasn't, no. Huh. If I just got the lamb, then I'm not sure. Because, like, good lord. Yeah. But, do it again. Uh, then, the, like, it, it felt like a letdown with the dessert. But... I think you also have so much in you at that point. Plus, just imagine all the wine you've drank at that point. You drank... It's like, there's a wine for each dish, right? Exactly. There's a pairing for each dish. Then you got that really heavy, sweet wine at 20%. The 21 and 21 and a half percent like almost black wine yeah and that's the dessert in yeah so right so it reminds you almost like a ice wine you got here yeah you know and chef gave me that bottle and i broke it oh yeah <laughs> sad oh, days wow. sad days <laughs> but yeah uh brilliant. brilliant brilliant journey it's like i would love to go there if you want to sponsor us join our patreon yep <laughs> join our some member list make here. the content happen guys make you know, the content happen <laughs> just like thank you for liking and subscribing thank you for putting up with us and yeah be good to you be good to others we love you we love you lots thank you guys for watching